dear students and uh, this week we are going to discuss one of the very important agreement under the WTO that is the anti dumping agreement. So, why it is uh, you know I said it is very important agreement because the largest number of litigations under the WTO agreements come under a single agreement that is known as this anti dumping agreement. So, in this class we will see that what is this we, we talked about anti dumping. So, first we have to understand what is dumping, then we will see what is anti dumping duties, then why the people uh, try to dump products in other markets. So, dumping not in uh, the, the colloquial uh, meaning and dumping under this particular agreement, what is the meaning under the trade law. Then what are the prerequisites for imposing anti dumping duties, then we will see some of the components of uh, you know the components of finding out the dumping like normal value, dumping how the dumping margin is calculated and some of the methodologies used by the countries for the calculation of dumping margin. So, why this agreement is important because when we saw the history of uh, this dumping. So, this dumping in common parlance. So, you dump your products in other markets. So, this is simply known it as dumping a particular product. So, in general situations, so you can see that it is uh, known as international price discrimination. So, whether you discriminate prices so, the members are concerned about dumping of a particular product in their uh, market and definitely dumping per se is not prohibited under the WTO agreement, neither under the GATT nor under the WTO. But dumping at price discrimination that is a concern, international price discrimination is a concern from the very beginning. So, if you are selling your product even at a very low cost, the low cost in inverted commas that can be uh, less than the production cost, less than your domestic market, if you sell it in the foreign market then the countries are concerned about it. Why the countries should concerned about it? So, it depends upon the price at which you are selling at in the export market. So, dumping is nothing but I would say that simply comparing the prices and you determine whether the other country is dumping a particular product in the market or not dumping in the market. So, why the people should so, what WTO actually regulates? The WTO regulates the action of dumping by the companies. So, it is not regulating the companies actually, it is regulating what the governments can do when a company is dumped a particular product in the foreign market. So, WTO agreement is not concerned about what the companies are doing. Once the companies from one particular country dumped a particular product on other country, then two governments are in touch with and they talk to each other and they talk on disciplines. Then what to do? That how it can be disciplined and what actions can be taken? And what are the prerequisites for imposing an additional duty which is known as anti dumping duty. This is actually discussed in, in, in the, the preliminary in the GATT provisions and then uh, in, in full anti dumping code in the Tokyo round and then the Uruguay round of negotiations come out with the WTO agreement. So, the anti dumping agreement defines what is dumping? What is this dumping? 
It's, I told this is not in the common parlance of if you dump some waste somewhere or some kind of goods somewhere and the definition under trade law anti dumping agreement is different. So, this dumping is determined mainly because on I already said that on price discrimination. So, from that particular background you see this particular definition article 2 1 of anti dumping agreement which defines dumping. It says a product is to be considered as being dumped inclusive definition we consider. So, introducing a particular product into the commerce of another country less than its normal value. So, we will see that what is the definition of normal value. If the export price of the product exported from one country to another is less than the comparable price. So, we saw normal value, export price and then comparable price in the ordinary course of trade for a like product, it is not only really the specific product, but also for like product when destined for consumption in the exporting country. So, there are so many components, we will discuss again these components separately in the, in the, in the coming slides. So, this is for the purposes of what we are discussing about dumping, what kind of dumping we are discussing about. We are discussing about price discrimination in different markets. So, we can see the dumping is uh, you know defined by different uh, economists and Jacob Weiner is one of the uh, important economists who talked about or, or wrote about dumping. And what he said? He said that this is price discrimination between national markets, two national markets and this is nothing to do with international market. So, one country dump a product in another country and there is a price discrimination. So, dumping is in, in common man's parlance, it is selling a particular product for a very low price at the another country. So, economic terms, so it can be in, in, in we can tame it as below the cost of production and also the consumers other country and you know consumers in the other country is benefited by this kind of uh, you know activities may be benefited. So, and what are the motives behind the activity? Why the people should, why a particular company should sell a particular product in the international market for a lower price? It may be due to various reasons. It may be due to, to catch the foreign market. So, they are entering first time, they want to catch the foreign market or their domestic market is saturated by their stockpiling and monopoly or, or cartel as a part of the cartel formation also. So, it can become, so you know selling particular product for a very low prices or it may be for selling off the excess stocks. So, the domestic market they are not able to sell it, so they want to sell it in the international market. Then another very important reason may be predatory in nature to send out its competitors from the market, predatory practice and even in order to retain a foreign market. So, all these are some of the reasons for selling companies products in the international market for lower prices. So, this any one can be a reason. Let us see what happened after 1995. So, I was talking about this agreement is one of the most important agreement and controversial agreement mainly because of the number of disputes or number of anti dumping we call it as number of anti dumping actions. So, far from 1995 to June 2023, there are 6658 anti-dumping actions or I would say that 
the complaints are received by WTO members or they have taken 6658 cases. So, actions are taken by 164 member countries. You see from 1995 onwards average it is 200 cases average. So, this number has gone down only in 20 well, you can say that 19 or, or 2018. So, but 2018 also is uh, 202, 19 also 250 and even 2021 also 186. Then the, the least number of cases which was reported after the entire period of WTO is in 2022. I hope that because in 2021 and 22 there was no much trade of goods happened mainly because of the pandemic. So, you can see the entire history of anti-dumping actions from 1995 even in 1995 it was 157 actions all the years and it is uh, only in 2022 because of uh, you know everything stopped. So, even 2023 for the last first, first half up to June uh, 2023 it is 76 actions so far, but this year also the number may be less than 200. And out of the 6658 uh, 6, actions at the domestic level 143 cases came to WTO dispute settlement system and this is the largest category of single agreement cases which was dealt in WTO the one day or the other day there is a anti dumping case. A dispute which came to the WTO 143 in number anti dumping cases and one of the largest number of cases around 500. Uh, around 500 WTO cases, 143 cases are anti-dumping cases. And then who is the champion of anti-dumping actions and also the victim countries. The victim countries are those who are uh, the, the, the uh, victims of this dumping or how many cases are initiated by the initiators and against whom. So, India is with largest number of initiations 1146 cases and remember and the, the all initiators India is the champion and even the US has only initiated 891 disputes. They, they, they raise the dispute against other countries and EU 548, Brazil a de single developing country. So, India and Brazil two developing countries constitute 1500 anti dumping initiations in WTO. Australia we can understand it is it is a developed country 378. China which become a WTO member in 2002 hardly now it is uh, you know 20 21 years it is going to be more you know just 20 years. They have started anti dumping actions 294. South Africa 254. At the same time the whole uh, uh, the, the anti dumping actions the victim country is China. Already they are faced 1588 cases are filed against them and a small countries like Korean Republic they faced 490 cases. So, you can see that these countries are you know conceptually saying these victim countries are dumping on this set of countries. So, they are taking actions against dumping, but interestingly you can see that some of the countries are in both sides for example, the US and India. So, US has initiated 891 cases at the same time all other countries are filed only 319 cases against the US 
and very small countries like Chinese Taipei is faced 340 cases. And India, a champion of anti dumping actions, initiated 1146 cases against other countries. At the same time, other countries imposed uh, anti dumping duties on India only in 275 cases. Small country like Thailand. And you can find out these are uh, you know the, the victim so called victim countries are supplying goods to the whole world whether it is China or it is Korea or it is Chinese Taipei or it is Thailand. Even Indonesia is faced with 246 number of cases disputes within the WTO dispute settlement system so or initiatives by country to country. So, the entire scenario shows it is not only the developed countries using the WTO agreement against other countries, but the developing countries are the, the, the most users of this measure against the developed countries and definitely it is not only the developed countries, a single country is China. The largest number of initiations are against China. Now, we comes to the mandate, what was the original mandate under the GATT agreement. So, under the GATT agreement, article 6 which talks about anti dumping measures. So, let us little bit go be, you know uh, before 1947. So, you can find these additional duties were imposed by United States against imports from Canada, imports from other parts of the world to the US uh, market. UK has imposed additional duties on Canadian exports and the US enacted the smooth Havley act to impose additional duties. So, the great depression time 1930s just before the second world war, they made separate legislations to protect their domestic markets and they impose additional duties. This is nothing but anti dumping duties and this is mainly in order to protect the domestic industries from competition from outside competition. So, reduce competition at the same time this is used as a barrier to export of goods into the markets. Then after the, uh, the second world war we talked about ITO, the failed ITO, then the GATT came into existence. So, article 6 which talks about anti dumping actions, because the members are concerned about the imposition of additional duties from the very beginning of GATT. So, what article 6 says? Article 6 says that measures against imports of a product at an export price below its normal value. So, the WTO definition is definitely sourced from the GATT provisions and it explains what it is the normal value. Usually, the price of the product in the domestic market of the exporting country. So, the normal value is nothing but the price of a product which is exported to another market. So, what is the price in for example, if India is exporting a particular product into United States, the normal value is the price of the product which is sold in the Indian market. So, the exporting country price is the normal value. If such dumped imports are causing injury to the domestic industry, I already said that the dumping per se is not actionable, dumping per se is not prohibited it must injure the domestic industry, it's cause injury to the domestic industry. So, we will see that what is this uh, you know injury, what kind of injury to the domestic industry and what is this domestic industry. So, who is this domestic industry? Domestic industry in the territory of the importing contracting party. So, the WTO agreement article 2 1 
gives clarity to article 6. So, article 6 itself says what is the definition of uh, is you know clearly says about uh, talking about dumping. And also we can see that the previous agreements because when the tariffs were law for, you know lowered in a particular country there is every possibility that the country is increasingly there will be a surge in uh, uh, you know imports into that particular country. So, in order to counter in order to counter this dumping so the 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 member countries want to impose additional duties. So, 6 article 6 put certain conditions for the imposition of duties and the first condition is material injury to the domestic industry. We will see the definition of material injury and also the domestic industry. So, article 6 gives clear guidance as to what you mean by export price and what it is mean by injury or material injury and what is the domestic industry. So, that the countries can look into this particular specific criteria for imposing anti dumping duties. So, so the various codes are you know so because as I said that article 6 very clearly talks about anti dumping actions and also you can see that the subsequent important rounds the two important rounds one is Kennedy round and another one is the Tokyo round. So, when compared to all other streams the Kennedy round code come out with anti dumping code a code on agreement on anti dumping practices and which came into force in 1967. So, but the United States refused to sign this mainly because they want to impose duties additional duties. So, if you sign this particular agreement then their imposition of additional duties will be subjected to this particular uh, guidelines of this particular code. So, they did not sign it. So, the, 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 the largest uh, the largest you know the trader if do not sign an agreement then there is no point in you know practical significance is very less. So, that is happened to the Kennedy round code uh, of anti dumping. Then comes the second Tokyo round of code and Tokyo round of code improved and more guidance is added to the GATT article 6. So, and certain procedural aspects and requirements are also and requirement of investigation and other procedures were uh, prescribed under Tokyo round code. <coughs> so, the Tokyo round code was a full code was a full code on anti dumping and but again you can see that. So, the it is a general framework general framework for uh, for the determination of dumping determination of injury and also <coughs> other prerequisites were discussed and concluded the Tokyo round of negotiations. But the drawback of uh, the implementation was that only 27 members are party to this particular agreement. Unlike WTO agreement to be signed as a single undertaking the GATT agreements the applicability was very less. So, only 27 members become party to this agreement it is not necessary that you should take it as a complete package you cannot pick and choose from WTO agreements, but GATT you can pick and choose you can you, you can you can remains to be uh, uh, it remains to be not signed a particular agreement. So, only 27 members signed this particular agreement. So, what it is uh, known as what it will come these anti dumping actions fit into the WTO scheme and this fit into the scheme of trade remedy measures along with two other agreements and the two other agreements were and one is on subsidies and countervailing duties and other one is safeguard measures. So, if a product is exported 
a subsidized product is exported. So, in order to counter, so you have to put subsidies and countervailing measures or countervailing duties. And if there is a sudden surge in imports of materials, then the safeguard measures to be safeguard duties to be imposed. And when a product is dumped in the market, then anti dumping duties to be imposed. But the WTO is not giving any clear guidelines with regard to the uh, alternative uses of these methods. So, in, 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 in practical sense, these three trade remedy measures can be imposed on the same imports. So, the same imports can be found to be dumped, the same imports can be found to be subsidized and if and, and the, it means that the same set of imports can meet anti-dumping actions, countervailing duty measures, subsidies and countervailing duty uh, duties also and safeguard duties also. So, three duties can be imposed on the same imports. So, this anti-dumping fit into the agreements of trade remedy measures with other two. What are the preconditions for initiating an anti-dumping action? The preconditions for imposing anti-dumping actions, one, there must be dumping, two, injury or material injury to the domestic industry, three, a causal link between dumping and injury to the domestic industry. So, three criteria dumping, injury and causal link and we will see elaborately one by one. So, the if, if we saw earlier the definition. So, what are the important content or component of the definition which we saw that one is normal value and second is export price then there is a comparable price <coughs> like product. So, we will see these components of the definition of dumping one by one <coughs> and first of all the normal value. So, normal value we said that get it is very clearly said explained there is a price comparison between the export market and the import market or, or the normal value is the price at which the product is sold in the exporting country or domestic market. But in the WTO, the normal value is elaborated. It says the normal value is the comparable price in the ordinary course of trade for the like product when destined for consumption in the exporting country. So, normal value is simply want to say it is the domestic sale prices of the goods which are exported. The same goods, what is the price at your domestic market? Then what price you are selling the same product at the export market? So, a price comparison is made that is the normal value. And the export price is the, so and, and the entire, uh, the transaction should be the ordinary course of trade. It's, it should not be a, spe, a special price. So, export price, export price is the price of the product in the country of import. So, the dumping margin is calculated simply between the normal value and export price. So, what is the price you are selling that particular product in the domestic market of uh, exporting country and the export price. So, what is the price in the importing country? So, the difference between these two is the dumping margin. We will come to the dumping margin again, how to calculate the dumping margin again uh, detail later. So, in between there is a terminology which is known as like product. What is this like product? So, the WTO agreement says a product which is identical or alike in all respects to the product exported. So, it means that it is not only the, the, not only the same product which is exported but like product which is exported, it can be a like product as well. So, even though it may not be identical, but having characteristics close to resembling 
the characteristics close to resembling those of the subject product. It means that it can be or uh, you know it is again the question is whether apple and oranges can be uh, compared together, whether the prices of apple and oranges can be compared together. The answer is no. So, certain criteria to be fulfilled. So, what is that those criteria of the like product? So, the WTO says that the agreement says that directly competitive or substitutable product and so this relationship between the export pro exporter product and also the domestic product should be very close directly competitive or substitutable that is the first condition. Second, so the essence of the relationship is the competition between these two particular products and thirdly the competitive means characterized by competition. So, substitutable is means able to be substituted. So, the context of competitive relationship is necessarily the marketplace and also it is a consumer choice. So, competition between products are always evolving the market and the competition laws of domestic countries will be taken place and not the anti dumping act. But when for the determination of a like product, this competition and substitutability is to be taken into consideration. And we will see one example. So, this is a, a Japan alcoholic case which is the in WTO it is known as the Japan alcoholic case and basically it is a tax case the Japan has uh, imposed additional taxes on the import of vodka and vodka is everybody knows that it is a famous uh, uh, alcoholic product uh, from Russia. And so, the, the, the Japan has imposed these additional uh, taxes under the domestic law and which was questioned before the WTO agreement. So, here are the two products. So, what was the basic argument? So, the basic argument was that a domestic product which is known as shochu and shochu is a product in Japan which is made by every household as a domestic drink and they take it as uh, you know along with the dinner. Dinner time they is almost everybody in the family takes this particular drink shochu in the uh, in Japan and which is which was not taxed which was not taxed at that point of time. So, the question was whether this a domestic drink known as shochu and an imported alcoholic product vodka are like products. The WTO dispute settlement panel and appellate body they said that the shochu is an alcoholic product it is similar to as that of or the language used is like product as that of whiskey, brandy, rum, gin, oh no, ginever and any other liquors which are directly competitive or substitutable products. So, the panel said you should tax if you are taxing whiskey, brandy, rum, gin and vodka you should tax shochu as well otherwise it is violation of the obligations under article 32 of the gat agreement so it is very clear you cannot discriminate between national product and a foreign product the national treatment principle and we said that the entire WTO is based on two cardinal principles one is the MFN clause and the second one is the national treatment. So, article 3 2 violation. So, and you cannot escape from saying that every household uses it. So, the, the, the WTO panel and appellate body looked into. So, what is the purpose and what is the characteristics whether it is similar to as that of characteristics whether it is exchangeable or equally competitive product 
and the panel and appellate body said that shochu is a like product as that of vodka. So, this is the interpretation given in this particular case, the Japan alcoholic case and you can look into the Korea alcoholic case as well. So, what we want to say is that it is not only the same product, it is the similar product as well, like product as well can be taken into consideration for the imposition of uh, anti dumping duties. Then the prices in certain cases, the prices may be rejected and because we already said that in the ordinary course of trade, if the sale of a particular product is not in the ordinary course of trade, then that prices will be rejected. And second, a particular market situation, for example, very low volume of domestic market sale and very high volume of export, it is a special market situation, then you cannot compare these prices. Thirdly, if a price is not available, a third country export price is to be taken into consideration and you construct the value of construct the normal value. So, this is the constructed normal value method. So, article 2 2 which talks about exclusion of uh, like normal value calculation in certain circumstances. So, if domestic price as I already said that it is if the comparison is not possible then you take a third country price or, or third country comparable price of a like product, not even the same product like product and you construct the normal value. So, this construction is happening, the value is calculated based upon uh, uh, the, the cost of production and a reasonable amount of administrative charges, selling, general cost and other profits. So, these prices can be added for the comparisons and how these cost, cost of uh, administrative selling and general cost and profits rates are calculated. Article 222 says that these particular prices should be based on actual data pertaining to production and sales of like product and the, the, the problem is that whether how many companies will be ready to give the cost of production data to the to, to, to the investigators and most of the companies they never give the cost of actual cost of production to the investigators. So, this is the constraint uh, faced by the investigating authorities when they make this comparison normal value calculation. So, if the original cost of production is not uh, uh, disclosed it will be very difficult to calculate uh, the, the normal value. And then we talked about a particular market situation and what is this particular market situation is not defined. And one market situation can be if there is no domestic sales. So, what it says for example, uh, in, in the panel in the easy cotton yarn from Brazil case dispute talked about hyperinflation frozing exchange rate. So, the, the, the panel said that these situations does not or did not constitute a particular market situation, hyperinflation, frozen exchange rate continuation, this is not a particular market situation. Then the question is what you const what is exactly constitute a particular market situation and there is no guidance available under the WTO agreement. So, it will depend upon uh, place to place and circumstance to circumstances and case to case decided by panel and appellate body. Now, we talk about the calculation of dumping margin, how the dumping margin is, why you want to uh, calculate the dumping margin, because the duty to be imposed is calculated based on dumping margin. So, it is very simple formula to calculate dumping margin. It is the difference between 
the domestic price, the export price and normal value. That is, I would say that it is the difference between domestic price and export price. So, the calculation is very simple. For example, if a, a particular product is uh, you know the 100 and its export price is 80 and the dumping margin to be calculated is very simple. So, the dumping the amount is 20. So, it is 20 by 80 into 100. So, the dumping margin is 25 percent. So, the dumping margin calculation is by using a very simple formula that means, so domestic prices in the exporting country and the domestic prices in the importing country. So, we already said that is a price discrimination. So, if the prices are not available either you construct the prices or if you take the uh, prices of a third country right. So, and how the members uh, the how the investigating authorities are going to whether they are going to construct the price or whether they are going to look into the third country price or whether they are going to look into the normal value and there is no guidelines are provided by the WTO agreement. So, usually it is the normal value calculation. So, how this expo constructed export price which we talked about? So, it is calculated based on uh, selling the particular product to a an independent buyer or if there is no sales at all for example, in certain cases where there will be 100 percent uh, export oriented units and also export is only to certain countries. So, if there is no domestic sales it is very difficult to calculate the normal value. In such conditions and you can see that the is or not sold in the condition as imported or reasonable basis then the constructed export the price is, uh, uh, is calculated or constructed based on certain conditions. So, one we talked about is if there is no domestic sales in the ordinary course of uh, trade and then in, in certain cases there is you know completely export oriented. So, sometimes there is no sales of the same product in the domestic market in that particular case you can take into consideration of like products or, or, or certain type of products sold the domestic market. So, it is like product as well. In certain cases sales of a like product destined for consumption in the domestic market of the exporting country shall normally be considered a sufficient quantity for the determination of normal value sufficient quantity. So, if the quantity which constitutes 5 percent or more of the sales of the product under consideration to the importing member then a low ratio should be acceptable, where the evidence demonstrate that domestic sales at such level ratio are nonetheless of sufficient magnitude to provide a proper comparison. So, the provision which clearly says that the quantity should be adequate for proper comparison of the prices, otherwise it will be considered as de minimis level and which cannot be taken into consideration for the calculation of dumping margin. So, we talked about constructed normal value and constructed normal value normal constructed normal value. So, the panel said that what are the components to be taken into for the constructed normal value which includes the cost of production, reasonable amount of administrative selling and general cost and reasonable amount of profits. These are the three components to be taken into consideration for the constructed normal value under article 2 2 of the, 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 uh, the agreement on uh, anti dumping. And then also we can see that this what are the components this how these uh, uh, the, the administrative charges selling general cost and profits. So, I will be uh, so we already said that this should be based on actual data, but how many manufacturers will be willing to give this particular data to the investigating authorities. In that case, so and also it says that it should be based on actual amounts incurred and realized by the exporter or producer and also it says that the weighted average of the actual amounts incurred and realized by other exporters or producers subjected to investigation. So, the weighted average price also can be taken into consideration for the calculation of uh, dumping margin. And also you can see even 
like product also can be taken into consideration of uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the constructed normal value and certain special situations to be taken into consideration as well. So, because in certain circumstances a, a product is sold in the domestic market below the cost of production, such sales may be considered to be treated as in sometimes may be uh, regarded disregarded as in the ordinary course of trade. And so, sometimes so it will depend upon the economic condition of that particular country. So, that means in certain special circumstances to be taken into consideration for the calculation of dumping margin. So, special provisions for non market economic provisions this was mainly talking about China. Still China is considered to be a non market economy because the largest companies the producing companies are under the ownership of state. So, the presumption is that these companies you know whatever they produces the prices are not according to the their cost of production nor according to the market prices these are artificially made prices. So, there is a provision for special provision for non market economies and what it says it says that importing from a particular country that is a non market economy and then the comparison should be taken carefully with regard to the domestic prices. So, in most of those cases the comparison is to be made with a third country of the same product or the like product. So, non market economies to be the prices are not supposed to be taken to consideration. Then a fair comparison is to be made how you make a fair comparison according to article 2 4 what are the key principle over a fair comparison. So, this comparison may be made at the same level possibly at the export factory level and also sale at the same time. So, it means all the sales to be taken in a, a same period of time and at the same level of sale. So, x factory prices of a particular product are to be taken into consideration and the cost are also to be included. What are the other costs to be included in the price? That components for example, the other cost which includes the transporting cost or loading, unloading and other costs are also to be taken into consideration of the prices. So, a fair comparison is to be made and the guidelines are given under article 2 4 to be taken into consideration. And most or more importantly the margin of dumping is calculated we said that already it is a very simple formula, but some of the countries like European Union or the United States even including India has used certain methodologies which are not acceptable or it is against the WTO agreements and one of such methodologies are zeroing. When simply what is this zeroing? If the margin of dumping is found to be minus then these countries consider that minus figure to be 0. For the example given in this uh, particular table, so you can see the transactions and the normal values and different transaction dates and normal values same and export price on these particular transactions are found to be different. Then you saw you got the dumping margin 75, 25, minus 25 and minus 75. So, if you calculate the total dumping margin it is to be 0, but what these countries do? These countries put it minus 25 and minus 75 as 0, so that they can find always the dumping margin you know according to what they want. So, this methodology is even adopted in the EU India Berlin case. So, it is very simple zeroing. So, always there is a positive dumping margin. So, it is very simple if there is a positive dumping margin and negative dumping margin it is supposed to offset, but this negative dumping margin to be considered as only the value as 0 by these particular countries. 
then always if once you zero the negative dumping margin and then it is always going to be a positive dumping margin. So, instead of zero dumping margin you will find end up in finding minimum 20 percent dumping margin. So, actually nowhere in anti dumping agreement this kind of methodologies are prescribed, but the companies uh, or, or the countries practices it and the India blamed European Union for imposing this particular methodology in EU India Berlin and case, but later on it was found that India also used in some of the cases this methodology to calculate a dumping margin. So, it is a, a double edged sword. So, sometimes it can be used against you then you also use against others. So, this zeroing methodology is uh, you know considered to be uh, in, in, in easy India but in the case the dispute settlement system very clearly said that this is against the WTO agreement against the WTO agreement, but still some of the countries were using this particular methodology for finding dumping. And we said that comparison between export domestic price and export price. So, this is basically the normal value. So, this prices to be compared uh, in, in, in fair comparison to be made between the prices. So, it is very simple the margin of dumping is adjusted normal value minus adjusted export price divided by adjusted export price equal to the margin of dumping. It is very simple. So, any other methodology is not acceptable especially the methodologies which are adopted by the countries like zeroing methodology. So, in this class, so we discussed about what you what is known by dumping, what is the common uh, is, you know the, the meaning of dumping and what is the meaning of dumping under the anti-dumping agreement or the trade law and what are the components of dumping and especially when, when, a, when a, a product is known to be or says it is dumped. So, we said that dumping per se is not prohibited, but dumping when it affect the domestic industry or injuring or material injury to the domestic industry and then only anti-dumping actions can be taken or anti-dumping additional anti-dumping duties can be imposed. So, the three criteria prerequisites for imposing anti dumping duties are one is found dumping the first criteria and the second criteria is injury to the domestic industry or material injury to the domestic industry and what is the domestic industry also is very important and we will look into the next class. And three a causal relationship between dumping and injury. If there is no causal relationship between dumping and injury, no anti dumping action can be taken. For example, the all matter this the, the dumping is happened and there is no connection between injury to the domestic industry and the injury to the domestic industry is attributed to any other reason like economic slowdown, pandemic or any other for example, foreign exchange fluctuations, any other economic criteria then anti-dumping duties cannot be imposed. So, it clearly there must be a connectivation connection between anti-dumping duties and imposing anti-dumping duties dumping and injury to the domestic industry. If there is no injury to the domestic industry, no anti-dumping actions can be taken. Then we looked into how to calculate the dumping margin, because the calculation of dumping margin is important, because the WTO agreement says that you can impose duties only to the tune of dumping margin maximum, a, a lower duty also can be imposed to offset the, the dumping, but the margin of dumping to be calculated the maximum percentage is the maximum margin of dumping. So, what the countries do? The countries impose 
methodologies which are never mentioned under the anti dumping agreement and one such methodology is zeroing methodology and zeroing methodology always inflate the margin of dumping and even though the wto panel and appellate body said that especially in india eu betlin case this is against the wto agreement on anti dumping provisions the still the it, it, it is not to be continued by the members this kind of methodologies always inflate the dumping margin so that they can impose anti dumping duties so we talked about dumping we talked about the the prerequisites and we talked about zeroing and we talked about the the framework of the uh, the anti dumping actions how these you know the this margin the, the the duties can be imposed and in the next class we will talk about the second criteria that is injury to the domestic industry or what constitute material injury or what constitute material retardation of the industry that is the second prerequisite and the third prerequisite is the causal link what do you exactly mean by causal link between these two that we will discuss it in the, uh, in the next class.